Okay. Next talk is uh, <coughs> next talk is about the checkpoint uploading SSD. So, yeah, Jung Yoo Kim and Kevin Tang from SK Hynix will present here. So this checkpoint uploading SSD for the LLM training system is a uh, some kind of use case for of the computational storage. So at the first, we should understand what is a, a LLM checkpointing. So LLM checkpointing save the optimal state to the persistent storage. Is the optimal state means the parameter momentum and variance. So LLM system uh, can uh, roll back can be rolled back to the stable state by using the, this stored checkpoint. So for this example, so iteration um, n plus two can be recovered by using the that stored checkpoint data. So simply think, GPU memory data can be stored uh, stored into the uh, persistent storage and SSD. That is an LLM checkpointing. And this checkpointing has uh, some challenges. The first one is uh, we growing the model size. The total checkpoint size also grow. So uh, usually, the at every iteration, the total checkpoint state size is uh, some terabyte. And high burst and periodic checkpointing require high PCI, uh, high uh, PCI and network bandwidth consumptions. So that is uh, some another challenge. So to reduce the PCI and network bandwidth consumption and minimize the performance impact on training system from the heavy storage I/O, uh, that is uh, some problem. And we are trying to generate the checkpoint state in the SSD to solve this problem. Yeah, this is a AI training one iteration, very simplified version. So in uh, in LLM training, as a, there are four steps: a forward, backward, optimizer state on the GPU, and checkpoint. So after doing the forward, the backward, and optimizers update, so we we needed to store the, some uh, optimizers output data as a mom the momentum, variance, and parameter, we needed to store the, this data to the SSD. This is a checkpoint operation. So this momentum, variance, and parameter is the output of optimizer step. And the input of optimizer step is also gradient moment variance of the uh, previous iteration. So we try to upload the, this optimizer step in the, into the SSD. So that optimizer can be worked separately with the GPU, uh, but this uh, GPU can send the gradient value and should read the updated parameter for the next forward and next iteration. So this is our checkpoint uploading SSD. So we uploading the, that optimizer step into the SSD. And potential benefit of this checkpoint uploading SSD, uh, we think we can reduce the PCI network bandwidth consumption this is left figure is original uh, training system and right figure is uh, uh, with the uh, uh, checkpoint uploading SSD. So compared to the, uh, the baseline, so uh, our proposed system can uh, save the PCI network bandwidth for the every iteration. And so uh, now, so checkpoint have uh, some high burst and periodic features. So uh, so we can make a more flat uh, IO pattern compared to the baseline. So that can be a benefit and we can make a more uh, is a reasonable uh, infrastructure. And another potential benefit is uh, we can save the GPU memory uses. That means we can train the larger model or so we can increase the batch size. That means we can improve the GPU utilization. So at the left figure, so we can see that GPU memory usage is, uh, can be saved in, uh, with the checkpoint uploading SSD. And another benefit is a uh, shortened checkpoint restoration time. So in the right figure, we can see that we on, uh, with the checkpoint uploading SSD, we only need to restore the parameter data to the GPU from the SSD. But compared to the baseline, so we can uh, do the quick restore. Uh, how to integrate it with the system? So we simply think local and remote SSD versions. So in, in on-premise as a local SSD, 
with uh, and with DPU, IPU, and SmartNI configurations. It can support the pre-training and fine-tuning. But uh, to use the to apply the, the checkpoint uploading SSD, so we should place a, par a parameter group and its related data on the same SSD. That means in the uh, middle figure, so we can simply see uh, see that uh, there is a parameter group. This is a blue blue box, and that parameter group should be matched with the uh, orange box. That is a uh, some related data optimizer and gradient. Those two data is, uh, should be placed on the same SSD. So we, we needed to do the uh, file-based partitioning or uh, file-based in interleaving uh, can be supported in the system to apply the, that checkpoint uploading for, uh, to the system. And uh, so usually block and file, block file and object storage are using the object and block level interleaving like a left figure, so file should be divided into the object, and object divided object can be placed uh, onto the, the different server. Uh, I mean, that is a uh, object level interleaving, and in the server, so this object should be divided into block and block level interleaving to the multiple SSD. But uh, uh, so it's a hard, but it, in this situation, so it's very hard to place a parameter group, and it's a related. Uh, uh, data on the same SSD for the checkpoint uploading SSD. Uh, with considering the multi-tenant with file over barrier size, we cannot guarantee the good storage utilization with file or partition-based interleaving. So uh, that is uh, sort of, uh, some problem, so I'm looking for a good collaboration partner to solve it. And now, so my team is researching GFS G4 and device mapper layer with a checkpoint uploading SSD to minimize the software change and impact on the performance with the multi-tenant. Okay, so uh, remaining part is, so Kevin Tang will explain it, a more detailed part of uh, a checkpoint uploading SSD. So first, I want to explain uh, some details about the implementation and some of the complications. Uh, first topic uh, is about mixed precision training. Uh, mixed precision training is a commonly used technique. It speeds up the forward and backward passes by performing them in low precision while performing the optimizer step in high precision. And it allows training to take advantage of the 16-bit matrix multiply hardware and GPUs while maintaining the original model accuracy and allowing it to converge. So the figure below is showing an outline of uh, what mixed precision training the flow is like, and also how we integrated it into the checkpointing offloading SSD idea. So similar to full precision training, uh, mixed precision training uh, has the forward, backward uh, optimizer step and checkpointing stages. And in addition, mixed precision training additionally requires keeping uh, low precision and high precision copy of parameter and gradients, and then converting the data type based on the current stage of training. Uh, we performed the forward and backward pass on GPU because of the high compute requirement relative to the other stages. But other operations, such as uh, type conversion, um, optimization, and checkpointing, are able to be moved to the SSD. Uh, so the first figure is showing the formula for Atom, which is currently the most popular optimization method. Uh, from the formula, you can see it requires a substantial amount of extra memory to maintain and update the first and second moments, uh, M and V, in addition to the original parameters. Uh, effectively, it like triples the uh, size of the model. Uh, yeah. And Atom is an element-wise operation, and it has a relatively low compute requirement. Um, other works, such as uh, Microsoft Zero Offload, have shown that it can be offloaded to 
uh, server like x86 CPUs or to FPGAs to reduce the uh, GPU memory pressure. But we also consider the possibility of performing Atom on low power ARM CPUs uh, so that the idea could possibly be added to or it could share resources with the uh, CPU inside of the existing SSD controller. And because uh, it needs to maintain the extra moments and it's stored in higher position. The optimizer state is multiple times larger than the modeling gradient. The figure on the bottom right uh, shows the relative sizes of um, optimizer, model, and gradient uh, under some uh, various assumptions, either FP16 model or uh, FP8 model. And the motivation, uh, we focus on uh, moving uh, part of the computation to the SSD. Uh, we could write checkpoints without needing to send the full optimizer state from the GPU if we instead uh, communicate the just the low precision gradient to the SSD and then internally uh, perform the optimizer calculation. So compared to baseline system that uses conventional checkpointing, uh, we can expect to save up to 50% data transfer size between the GPU and the storage, depending on the checkpointing frequency. Um, the reduction comes from removing the transfer of the, um, the large optimizer state during the checkpointing phase. And if the baseline system is bottlenecked by either IO or network bandwidth, then we would expect a uh, speed up to the overall training. And uh, it comes with a few downsides. The first and main downside would be uh, added complexity required to perform the optimization and checkpoint in the SSD. Second downside would be uh, that there's a small storage overhead to store the current iteration's 16-bit model and parameters and gradients uh, in the SSD. But this is temporary data, it should be discarded after the next iteration, and it shouldn't substantially affect the SSD capacity. So we use Microsoft DeepSpeed as a baseline system representing the uh, conventional training. Uh, and then we applied checkpointing uh, on a normal SSD. We can understand that uh, all of the computation is performed on GPUs and including the uh, forward, backward, and optimizer stages. And then checkpointing involves writing the optimizer state, which includes the 32-bit um, parameters, momentum, and variance from the GPU to the SSD. And then uh, to implement the checkpoint offloading, we made modifications to DeepSpeed library. Uh, we enabled the NVMe offload feature and then modified it by moving the optimize, uh, optimizer and checkpoint stages uh, away from the GPU and then uh, on the uh, CPU on the SSD. During the optimizer stage, the uh, checkpoint offloading SSD uses uh, newly written gradients from the backward stage to update the optimizer state and then create new parameters that are read during the next iterations forward and backward pass. And then by enabling the uh, checkpointing uh, data movement from the GPU to the SSD, uh, the SSD already can compute uh, the new checkpoint data uh, just by inputting um, gradient data. Um, to evaluate the concept, we created a, a prototype using a FIDIS Sidewinder PCIe card uh, with attached SSDs. And then on the card, we just used the quad-core ARM A53 CPUs to implement the optimizer logic. Um, we did a small-scale like transformer pre-training uh, demonstration um, using a single, G C uh, single GPU and single SSD uh, running deep speed to train a 1.72 billion parameter uh, Megatron LLM uh, with checkpointing performed after each iteration in the baseline setup. And then in, yeah, uh, sorry. Uh, both the baseline setup and our demo setup 
uh, are using the uh, checkpointing to a remote server, which has a, a SSD. And the test scenario involves performing a single training iteration, and then we measure the both the GPU resource usage and the data transferred over the network, over RDMA. The main result we measured was a 44% reduction in the RNIC data transfer required for checkpointing relative to the baseline system using a conventional SSD uh, because we can avoid transfer of the large optimizer state over the network. And additionally, because we are offloading um, the optimizer state to the SSD, uh, it no longer needs to be stored in GPU memory. So we can also save uh, in our test 65% uh, of the GPU memory. Uh, and we have a demo booth if you'd like to learn more uh, inside of the expo room. Um, we're at the SK Hynix booth near the back center. Uh, the booth has a demo video of the scenario that I uh, discussed in the previous two slides. And then we're also going to be there to answer any of your questions. Thank you.